FIFA 18 has released its World Cup update. And guess what? I'm going to look into it and let you guys know the pros and the cons of FIFA 18. Find out more in one moment. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Extra Time TV. This is Andres Soklal and for all you FIFA fans out there, you all probably definitely will know and if you don't know, I'm a fan of FIFA. I've been playing it all the way back since 1995 and guess what? EA Sports has finally released its World Cup update. It's May 29th and I'm pretty sure by the time I edit, cut and upload this, all of you all would have played this already. So I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to play this thing and give you all my quick reactions to the FIFA 18 World Cup update. So to kick things off, I just want to let you all know that I've been playing this game all the way back since 1995. I also did my FIFA 18 review, which is a delayed mid-season review, so you can check that out up there. But I emphasize how long I've been playing this game. I played it on Super Nintendo, Xbox, Xbox 360, PlayStation 1, 2, 3, the PC, any console imaginable, I played it because I love the game, I love football, and of course I'm going to play the game. And I'm not one of those people who are like, I only play the game, but actually, play the game on consoles. Come on, that's nonsense. I love it, Leo Messi does it, so why can't I? Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm just gonna get into things. It's been released. First off, one of the issues that people have been playing FIFA for a long time is those god-awful World Cup games that they make, which are terrible. They come off as a cheap cash grab, and the only reason I really was happy about one in particular is because my home nation, Trinidad and Tobago, qualified in 2006, and it was you know, the novelty of purchasing a game with your national team, which is not normally in FIFA, which is a topic by itself. Why my country is not in FIFA? Coming up soon, so look out for that. So it ended up coming off as a cheap knockoff. FIFA, every couple of years, as I said before, I had an attachment to 2006 for obvious reasons because of my national team. But it always comes off as this throwaway game that you purchase, but we being fans of the game will always buy it because we are suckers. We purchase this thing, we play it. It's definitely a condensed version of the game. It's not really all that fun after a couple of games, you usually get bored and you end up going back playing the original game anyway. They did it for the UEFA Champions League a couple of years back, I think. I actually bought it. Yes, I know. And it was okay. You play a couple of games and you already put it on eBay and Amazon because you want to sell it. You usually sell it to guys for like, a third the price or even less because you don't really need anything. It just seems like a waste of hard drive space on your computer. And many, many years ago, I prophesied, I prophesied that eventually when technology catches up, we'll be able to download the games and download expansions, download squad updates. And guess what? That time is now. We finally caught up with the times. EA Sports and FIFA have really finally got it and realized that people are not going to buy a stupid expansion that you're probably going to throw away. It comes off cheap and sleazy and fans are not stupid. So with all that out of the way, I've downloaded the expansion and I've played it. And these are the following things that I've noticed so far. So I'm going to start things off with the first, you know, reaction to the game. You know, you install the game, you're excited. You see that installation thing, you can't wait until it gets to 100%. You're like, oh, hurry up. So basically, after you sit through the anticipation of waiting for that game to download, watching every percent from 1 to 100. Oh my God, oh my God. You finally get it, you load it up, and you get the, a very new intro, which is really nice. You get to see the World Cup Russia theme colors, the stadiums. You get that World Cup feel, they really tap into that buzz, and you know, EA Sports, Kudos to them, they always have pretty nifty intros. And, and once again, what I'll have to say is that it's free. Yes, it's free. So that's a perk immediately. Plus, I really love the colorful look. They did themselves proud with the intro. You head into the interface, it's the same FIFA 18. It's basically the same, but you have the option to go into the World Cup if you want to stick to the traditional game, the, the format of the game, which is original. You can stick to that. You go in and the interface has a couple things. You have the online play. You can have your fantasy team for those of you players who like that. You can make your custom cups. And those who just want to dive straight into the World Cup, it's also there as well. And of course, I checked out the settings. It's all generally the same. It's the same gameplay. Nothing has changed, which is also a perk from the last versions of the FIFA World Cup games. The gameplay was always different from the FIFA game that year. So in addition to the game being a knockoff, you have to sort of try and adjust to the new gameplay. And I remember one of the worst World Cup games, I think there was uh, the 2002 version. I hated that. There was the 2004 Euros. Hated that. Uh, there was a 2006 version. Love throwing that. Hated the game. So, you know, you get the theme here. It's like two separate games. So you already have the gameplay. You don't have to readjust. And that's a pro. So the settings are generally the same. I head into the game and I choose, of course, uh, Group D, Argentina. That's a no-brainer. And, you know, the teams are accurate. And the first thing, you know, you check your team management. And this is the first problem that I saw. 
The squads are not up to date. There's still players like Zabaleta and guys with like Ezekiel Garay. So the squads are not up to date with the currently released squads, which is interesting. I believe there may be an update that may fix that soon. So I'm going to go easy on them for that. I'm pretty sure that's going to be fixed when all the squads are finalized and I'll have one quick update that will update all the squads. But that's the first thing I noticed. The Argentina squad was not up to date. Secondly, you are not allowed the full complement of 23 players. You still have a limited amount of subs, which I think it's seven. I may be wrong, but this is my quick reaction. So you actually don't have the maximum array of substitutes, which you usually are allowed when you're in an international tournament. So it's just like, you know, uh, I think uh, the standard seven, which I think, you know, obviously is not enough. Uh, so wrong squads and you don't have your full complement of players because usually at the World Cup you have your 23 players You have your starting 11 and the rest are subs which you could choose from all these guys So the maximum amount of subs you could choose are seven. So, you know, that's definitely something I noticed immediately uh, The gameplay as I said before is the same the intros I mean, I'm gonna go into details here because come on all of you guys who played FIFA when you get that game You look at every single intro you sit down. That's the fun part. That's why we love the game The first game was played in the authentic stadiums. They gave you the usual facts about the stadium the facts about the team while the screens are loading you get all those cool factors and also the refs now i may be wrong i'm gonna have to double check this but they have the authentic refs for each group i'm gonna have to check that out you guys in the comment section below to let me know if that's true but it adds to the experience this is why we like it this is the world cup you want to feel like you are a part of this world cup feels authentic the commentary is very legit you actually hear the substitutions i mean that's in all the games but you know it's very cool to hear that World Cup setting and hear the substitutions because I pay attention to those details and yes it's already there in FIFA but you know I'm looking at this like if it's a separate game so that's one of the cool things I really like another pro is that the uniforms are in fact authentic but I think that's a minimum expectancy for a game like this when you're in the World Cup there's just 32 teams so you're gonna get the authentic uniforms they look great the graphics look pretty exceptional uh, you know there are some guys that look nothing like how they usually look which is shocking because I think they have less players so they could spend a little more effort on those player likenesses. Come on EA Sports. Also another thing, they're not allowing you to do the qualification process, which I kind, I'm kind of okay with because for example, the expansions they had in other FIFA incarnations, you could have played as your home nation and try to qualify. Uh, in 2006, I'm gonna use that as an example, you could have played with Trinidad in 2010 as well and try to qualify for the World Cup, but I think it's an update so they condensed it. So that option is not there. You could only play the World Cup itself and also, you could also make custom cups for the teams you want. I don't know if there have been any upgrades since, but that's what I've seen so far. So the qualification process is not there for teams that are not in the World Cup. I remember in 2010, you could have played with, I played with Trinan to be with my friends and we tried to qualify. So that option was there. So that's not there anymore, unless there's an upgrade that I don't know about. So that being said, it's a great game. Of course, I'm playing the campaign with Argentina right now. So you guys look out for those videos. I'm gonna put that online. So check that link in the description below. I'm gonna do a YouTube feed of me actually playing those games. So let me know what you think about that. It's pretty authentic. I'm in the semifinals right now. So I'm gonna see how that goes. Overall, I love the game. I don't usually do rankings because I'm not a game reviewer. This is just my quick reaction. The game is pretty solid. It's free. I recommend that everybody download this thing as soon as possible and we start playing each other because there's the option to play each other online. It's a wonderful game. I'll probably give it a solid 7 out of 10 because I don't do rankings. So that's my official reaction to the game. Let me know what you think. Is there something that you saw that I didn't see? Is there an update that while I was editing this video that you all saw that I missed? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about the game. Do you think it's a knockoff? Do you like it? Do you prefer the original versions? Let me know what you think. So once again, this is Andrew Sokla. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are everywhere. Also, our upcoming episodes on Flow Sports, which is the premier Caribbean network. I'll put a link to that channel in the description below. That's the premier channel in the Caribbean. EXTV has teamed up with these guys to do some wonderful things. So stay tuned for that. Let me know what you think. So this is Andrew Soklau signing off.